Hello mates, it's been a bit more than one year since I've made this video, my most viewed work. So I thought I'd make another one, better, more explanatory, using better video editing skills, about how to easily install Crank OS on a Bobcat 300 grams to 90, or a to 95 model. I only have G to 95 units, but this guide should apply to G to 90 also. But not to these models, don't try it. Browsing Crank.io, we can see different guides for different Bobcat miners, I'd recommend following the guide also. Crank guide is pretty simple to follow, though I use a T8 screwdriver instead of a T9. Browsing back to downloads, let's start by getting the proper Crank OS for our Bobcats. Keep it simple, download the image and all other necessary tools, somewhere where you'd have easy access to, in my case, I'm making a new folder on my desktop for this video, which is a retaliation to my old video, regarding, let's just say it like this, my editing skills. Jumping back to the guide, we need the link to the flashing tool, it's the easiest way to get them at this point. All links will be down in the description as well. Download both Last Rock Chip Flashing Tool version and the Driver Assistant in the same folder as the image. Navigating to our downloading folder, we need to extract everything from their archived forms. For the image I recommend 7-zip, link down below. For the flashing tool and the driver just use Windows Explorer. Almost forgot, scroll down in the guide, or check the description for the link, to download the bootloader, an important component in our installation. After deleting the compressed files to keep my setup folder as clean as possible, next steps are installing the driver assistant and reboot the PC to avoid further possible issues. Okay, now the real fun begins, before starting, I want to add some things to be clear. I'm not responsible for any damage you might possibly do to your machine, even if, until now, there are no such reports that I'm aware. If you want to use your Bobcat for Helium Network as well, Consider onboarding it first on that network before flashing Crank OS. There is a way to sort of going back, using an unofficial Nebra image for 2GB Bobcats, and registering the Bobcat on Helium network. I've seen reports of it working, but I never tried it myself. Consider that the Bobcat wallet for registering on Helium is empty, so you'd have to pay for registration yourself, $50 in data credits including location assertion. If you want to onboard on Helium, but you don't have the Bobcat at the final location, don't set the location, you can do it later when you'll be ready with your setup using the Helium Black App, okay, enough Helium in my video. I used a T8 screwdriver to unscrew Bobcat's case, the guide specifies a T9 one, but I didn't have one to test it. It looks to me it fits perfectly into the screw. Make sure inside on the board the serial number from the sticker starts with G to 95, or 290, and not differently. If you have a G285, you might follow this video, it's kind of the same, the board is different, but you'd have to remove this plate to check that's ASK Hynix memory chip under and not CXMT1. There's a different setup for that one, join Crank Discord to ask for it cause it's not released publicly, let's just say, too many copycats out there that attribute other people's work as their own. Even if the Bobcat will be in the loader or mask ROM modes, and even if the low raw concentrator should not function in these mods, I keep an antenna attached trough out the whole flashing process, better safe than sorry. Last thing, make sure the micro USB cable that you'd use is for data transfer also, not only for charging. Time to start the setup, make sure the Bobcat case is opened. Open the Rock Chip Tool app. Search and open Device Manager. Take the micro USB cable. Connect it to the Bobcat and your PC. Connect Bobcat's power supply to the Bobcat. Press and hold the recovery button. And plug the power supply to the power outlet. You should hear a Windows sound that it was connected to the PC. Additionally, if you check Device Manager, you'll see a Rock USB device connected. Of course, the most important message is this one. Navigate to Advanced Mode tab and click Erase All button. It'll take a bit of time so be patient. Do not disconnect the Bobcat from the PC. Don't close the PC nor the Bobcat before the process is done 100%. Usually, it shouldn't be a problem, as it's a rock pie, hard as a rock, it doesn't brick, but better safe than sorry. If any power surge happens in the process, you should be able to restart the process, 
but I'm not testing it on my Bobcat. When the erasing is completed 100%, unplug the Bobcat from the power outlet and reboot the PC. After the reboot is completed, run the Rock Chip Tool app again, keep the Bobcat connected with the USB cable to the PC, plug the Bobcat's power supply to the power outlet without touching any button, a message found one mask ROM device should appear. Right click on the blank area, click on load config, in the RK Dev Tool folder select EMMC configuration file. By the loader route, click on the right side blank area and select the loader file we almost forgot to download, the bin file from the Bobcat folder. By the image route, click on the right side blank area and select the extracted crank image. Check the box by the right by address, check all the addresses have only zeros written, and click run. It should take 20 to 30 seconds to flash the image, depending on the USB port and cable, and voila, you flashed your Bobcat with CrankOS. Additionally, crank image download should be at 100%, the message download OK should appear and the mask ROM message should disappear. After several seconds the light will start flashing, meaning CrankOS booted. You can unplug the Bobcat now, shut it down. Next step is setting up the crank local dashboard. Assemble back the Bobcat's case before proceeding, no need for it to remain opened, and grab an Ethernet or LAN cable. Keep the antenna attached, connect the LAN cable to the Bobcat and your router and plug the Bobcat to the power outlet to power it on. Next step is to find out Bobcat's IP, I prefer logging into my router and look for a new connected device by the wired devices section, but for this video we'll use a more general method, advanced IP scanner, link in the description. Make sure you give the Bobcat 5 minutes to fully boot before checking for its IP, and consider that CrankOS will update itself over the air to the last version, so be patient with it. If you don't find the IP, unplug and replug its power source, give it again some 5 to 10 minutes, search for it again. This process might be needed several times for some units, mostly not necessary. The problem, to say like this, with IP scanners, is that they might take more than half an hour to find all the IPs connected to your network. I didn't record all the scanning process for obvious reasons. When it finally finished scanning, you'd see an IP having the name crank followed by 8 digits. In my case, it's the same name and IP as when I checked my router by wired connections. Copy its local IP and open your favorite browser. To copy the IP, right click on it, copy IP. Paste the IP followed by the port 17080, press enter. If by any chance you get a connection error, make sure you enforce HTTP in the browsing bar. When the login box appears, for first login, don't input any credentials. Local dashboard will load and ask you to set up the gateway. About the gateway ID, if this is your first flash before registering your gateway on the crank user dashboard, if you own a license, you don't have to do anything. I'll leave some videos linked down below about full onboarding setup on Crank Network or how to set up the user dashboard. But, if you are like me, reflashing an already onboarded Bobcat, you have to go to user dashboard to copy the registered ID from before flashing. Crank OS has the habit of changing the ID and the name of your Bobcat. The ID is associated with the license. Your Bobcat won't appear active if you don't add the correct ID. The rest is the same. Select Crank as image. Bobcat to gigabytes as model, be sure to select your proper region, select what antenna you'll be using, if it'll be outside, inside, with coax cable or without, each situation differs. About the multiplexer, if you won't be using the Bobcat for Helium, you could turn it off, it shouldn't affect the gateway's performance in crank, only in Helium. If you will use it for Helium also, make sure the port 1700 for crank and 1680 for Helium are both added. Unfortunately, Bobcat has no real USB port to attach a GPS module to it, so this function is taboo in this case. Press save. The gateway will reboot. For the rest of the setup follow my video from the description. For reflashed Bobcat's cranksters, don't forget to add your wallet to the local dashboard as well. Last thing, go to settings and create the password for your login credentials, cause it'll remain blank if not and that's a security issue for you. To log in again afterwards. The username will be admin and the password the one you created, beware. There's no way around if you forget the password, only to reflash again, I assume that'll be a pain, but hey, you gonna have my video here for reference, cheers.